Welcome to Madrona Marsh Preserve, a place where birds can thrive with many different types of habitats. Habitats provide food, shelter, water, and a place where birds can breed. The preserve is a place where many babies are born. A place to find food. And a place to find water. and a place to rest. Many birds travel hundreds or thousands of miles to their wintering home and then again in the spring and summer to their area where they will breed and have babies. So Madrona Marsh Preserve is a place where they can stop and rest in the middle of their migration path along the Pacific Flyway. All the birds found on the preserve have special adaptations to help them survive in their habitat, just like you have adaptations that help you survive, such as your eyes for seeing, your ears for hearing. Well, these birds have specialized beaks for finding and eating their food and specialized feet to help them thrive in the water or in the trees or on the land. Now let's discover some of the most common birds and habitats found here on the preserve. All right, good morning class. My name is Melissa Lobel and I'm the manager here at Madrona Marsh Preserve and Nature Center. I would like to welcome you to the most spectacular place in the heart of South Bay, a 45 acre preserve in the middle of an urban area. I'm wondering if you've ever been to Madrona Marsh Preserve before. And if you have, that's wonderful. If you haven't had the chance, now you can safely come with your family and visit the preserve. So hopefully you can see firsthand all the things you're gonna learn today. I heard you guys are learning about birds and I happen to be a big bird lover, but it's also an important part of my job. So I wanna encourage you guys today, you're gonna learn about the different bird habitats. And I wanna encourage you guys, what are things you can do in your own backyard to help provide food, shelter, and water for birds. I do it in my backyard, and we love having the birds in our backyard. It will help you guys have a healthy ecosystem, but you also enjoy hearing the bird sounds and also knowing that you're providing food for many birds. All right, let's take a tour through the preserve. The upland habitat or back dune area is an area that does not flood during the rainy season like our wetlands. We have bladder pod, buckwheat, oak trees, sycamore trees, bush sunflower, coastal dune poppies, clarkia, and many other species of plants that provide food and shelter and a place for birds to breed. And we can't forget my favorite, the sages. We have Artemisia or California sagebush, black sage, white sage, and these are all great plants to plant in your backyard to provide habitat for all wildlife. Also in the upland habitat is our coastal prairie or our grasslands. This is a sensitive habitat that provides food and shelter for many species of birds like the western meadow lark, morning doves. We have lots of flycatchers such as Says phoebes, black phoebes, ash-throated flycatchers, and it's a great place for a bird of prey to perch and hunt, such as the red-tailed hawk and the American kestrels, which will eat ground-dwelling mammals, insects, and reptiles such as snakes and lizards. The red-tailed hawk is one of the most common birds of prey found in Southern California and often seen soaring above our coastal prairie or upland habitat. It is considered a raptor, which means it uses its powerful feet to catch its prey. It will eat ground-dwelling mammals and reptiles. You can identify this bird by that large red tail and the large wingspan. The American kestrel is the smallest falcon in North America and is commonly seen hunting in our coastal prairie or upland habitat. They are also considered a raptor, which means they use their feet to catch their prey. They love to eat small ground-dwelling mice, mammals, reptiles, and they're fierce and mighty and will take down scorpions. You can identify them by the black mallard stripes under their eyes, and sometimes when they're perched in a tree, they bob their tail. The western meadowlark is found in our coastal prairie 
and you can identify them by that beautiful bright yellow on the breast and that large beak. They prefer to eat seeds and will use their beak to dig into the ground to find insects. They are related to blackbirds and orioles. Black Phoebes are very common at Madrona Marsh Preserve. They can be seen in our coastal prairie, upland habitat, and wetland habitat. They are fly catchers, so they'll perch on twigs and trees, waiting for insects to fly by, catching them in mid-air. They're very commonly seen in backyards, so listen for that sharp whistle. The morning dove can be seen foraging throughout our upland habitat and coastal prairie, looking for seeds. This is a very common bird in North America and play an important role in all ecosystems, providing food for large birds of prey, such as owls, hawks, and falcons, sometimes even eagles. This is a common bird in your backyard, so listen for that who-like call. Now let's discover our vernal wetlands. Vernal just means spring, so our wetlands fill in the spring. The more rain we receive, the more our wetlands fill. And then in the summer and fall, it dries up and again fills in the summer as we receive rain. Now the wetlands are important. They provide habitat for many species of birds, including herons, egrets, coots, dabbling ducks, diving ducks, red-winged blackbirds, and many other types of birds. As you can see here, this is in late summer. Look how dry the wetlands are. Throughout the wetlands, you'll find many species of plants that provide food and shelter, such as tulies for red-winged blackbirds and other herons and egrets. And then you have the azola and duckweed, and the duckweed is on the surface of the water, providing a high protein source for little ducklings to help them grow big and strong. Then we have the willow trees that are specialized to live underwater with unique roots to help them breathe. And the willow trees provide shelter for many species of herons and egrets, coots, dabbling, and diving ducks. The mallard ducks are considered a dabbling duck using their beak to dabble on the surface. You can see the male and female are different in color and often you'll find babies in the springtime. The northern shoveler has a specialized beak to be able to sift along the surface of the water, eating plants, roots, and shoots. Then you have the Canada goose that also eats seeds, grasses, and shoots. Other aquatic birds such as herons have specialized beaks to be able to eat invertebrates and amphibians and even fish, such as the snowy egret and the green heron. Coots are another common bird and often will be seen in the spring with their young, vibrant looking babies. They also eat roots and shoots and leaves and even eat crustaceans and insects. Red-winged blackbirds are one of my favorite birds. The males are very unique with that bright red and yellow patch on their shoulders. They can often be seen in our tulies breeding in the springtime and will eat insects and seeds. This is one of the most common calls you'll hear when you visit the preserve. Another important habitat is the riparian habitat or near the water's edge, also the willow shrubs. This provides habitat, shelter, place to breed, and finding food for warblers and hummingbirds, birds of prey, and many other species of birds. Many of the warblers found at Madrona Marsh Preserve can be heard by ear, such as the Wilson's warblers, the common yellow throat, the black-throated gray warbler, the yellow warbler, and these warblers like to eat insects, aphids, spiders, caterpillars, and they're very commonly heard and seen in the canopies of the willow trees. Hummingbirds are common found in our willow shrubs. They have specialized beak and tongue to be able to retract nectar from open flowers, but they'll also eat insects. Some of the most common hummingbirds are the Allen's hummingbird and the Anna's hummingbird. Cooper's hawks, also known as a raptor, can be found in our willow shrubs, resting, feeding, and even nesting. This is one of the most common raptors seen on the preserve. 
So we saw the hummingbird nest, we saw the mallard babies, we hear warblers above us. But one thing that's not a bird, that's everywhere in here, frogs. We have frogs everywhere, babies being born right there. There's probably 200 frogs in that one patch and those frogs provide food for many birds. The last habitat I'll mention is our vernal pools. In fact, we have one of the only remaining vernal pools left in Los Angeles County. It's a seasonal depressional wetlands that provides habitat for different plants and animals. The animals that can be found in the vernal pools are many aquatic invertebrates that provide food for other bird species. Some of the birds that can be found in the vernal pools include egrets, herons, and dabbling ducks. So with a 45 acre preserve, you just saw some of the most common birds here at Madrona Marsh Preserve. And we have over 50 species of birds right now thriving here on the preserve. But we have have over 270 species of birds found or documented here. That's a lot of birds in a small area, 45 acres in the middle of an urban area. So things you guys can do in your backyard plant a few pollinator plants, California native plants. If your mom and dad go online and they type in California native plant nurseries, they can find locations to go buy the plants. You can provide water. I have a bird bath in my backyard with a little bit of a trickle, not a lot, because the birds want to take a bath just like you do. You like swimming in rivers and lakes and your pools, but you also like to bathe too. Birds need to bathe too, and they also need it for drinking. Then if you have lots of native plants in your backyard, guess what you're gonna have? Insects, and what do birds like to eat insects? What else does plants provide? Seeds, and seeds provide food for other species like finches and sparrows. So I wanna encourage you guys, plant a few plants in your backyard and I promise you're gonna have lots of animals and biodiversity. We'd like to thank you for learning all about birds and we hope you'll come visit us soon at Madrona Marsh Preserve.